Hello everyone, good to have you again at House of Refuge Church. I'm Pastor James Jeffries and uh, got a message for you today. We're going to talk about listening. But right now let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just love you and we give you all the glory and all the praise. You alone, you alone are God. And we pray right now for your wisdom and your direction that you open up our hearts and our minds to understand your word, that we may listen to the voice of the Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's hear in the title, word we need to all understand, the word listen. The ability to understand. You know, if you looked it up, hearing and listening and compared the two, you would see that hearing is just, to be able to hear the sounds that are around us. A deaf person cannot hear. They can't hear. Even though they might not understand, and people might, might hear somebody speaking another language, and, and we hear them, but we won't understand them. But listening has more of an in-depth word that's telling us that we're putting forth energy to try to understand. If someone was talking to me in a foreign language, I can do one of two things. I can just hear them and ignore them, or I'm getting me an interpreter, you know, through, through the means of me learning a language, which would take me too long. But get somebody to say, what did this person say? I'm, I'm interested enough to want to understand what they're saying. But what about God? God is speaking to us in, in His language. And of course, He's speaking to us to understand Him. But there's a decision we have to make. Because people could be hearing God... When they read their Bible, they, they get a word that tells them that they're doing something they shouldn't do. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to them and they get convicted. And then they could just decide to ignore it. That would be just hearing the Word of God. And we're not supposed to be a hearer only. We're going to see that more in the Scriptures. But we need to listen. And we need to decide to want to understand what we're hearing. And so this is the big difference. You know, when I preach the Word of God... I, listen, I can listen to people as I'm preaching. If they're listening to me, they respond. They might say, Amen. Or they might even just raise their hand. They, and they understood what I said, and it was a real blessing to them. But the people that are just hearing me, they're, they're looking, they're checking out their phones, and looking at what time it is, and look back at the clock. And I can tell that they're just, they're just hearing me. They're not listening to what I'm saying. Well, in times, that's the way we are with the Lord. We go into prayer, but we only pray for a couple minutes. But we gotta, we got to understand that a big chunk of your praying is to be quiet and listen to what God is saying. God is speaking to His children. He's speaking to all of us. And we need to be quiet and still. Let's go to the Scriptures this morning. Here in Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, uh, it says, Anyone... Who has ears to hear, let him listen. The Lord says this many times in the scriptures, having to do with the parable story that he was telling. This particular one, I believe, that I put down here this morning, has to do with John the Baptist. And, and the Lord was telling his disciples that, um, if you will, John the Baptist was Elijah. The spirit of Elijah was to come before the Lord. And he's going to come again before the second coming of the Lord too. But he said, if you will, if you can understand and comprehend, John the Baptist was Elijah. Now, I don't know if he was the actual person or the spirit of Elijah was on John the Baptist. doesn't matter too much one way or the other. But the idea is that he came in the spirit of Elijah. And so Jesus says this to anyone who has ears should listen. This is an interesting statement. Because every human being that's born normal, I'm sure some people were born without ears, and that's not a normal way to be born. But everyone that was born normal has two ears, ears to hear. But these ears were designed to hear the noises of this life, to listen to someone talk, to hear the animals, and so forth. They were designed to hear on this planet and in this life. But that's not the ears that Jesus is talking about because the statement would make no sense if it, if it was. He who has ears, let him, he should listen. He's saying to us, spiritual ears. We've got to understand that when you became a born-again believer, you began to have spiritual eyes, spiritual ears. You had a spiritual heart that believes. 
You have the mind of Christ, a spiritual mind from the Holy Spirit to be able to comprehend and understand. We have all these spiritual parts, but in many cases, and myself included, we live in the carnal realm more than we live in the spiritual realm. We have, we have a spiritual being inside of us. The Holy Spirit lives in us, but our spirit has been made born again. And we now, all of our attributes that go with the spiritual being, my spirit, which is my spiritual ears and eyes and, and my nose, the smell of things of God, my taste. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So we have a taste, a spiritual taste. We have spiritual sight to be able to see and, and comprehend what we see in spiritually. We have spiritual ears to hear, but to listen. Our spiritual ears are designed to listen. When you decide you want to understand God's Word, your spiritual ears begin to be open. And you begin to start understanding what you're hearing. You begin to understand what you're hearing. And so we need to, we need to know about all these spiritual things that we have. We have. You know, we, we can't just live like Jesus said to the, to the devil when he was tempted. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God shall men live. And so he's talking about spiritual food, the spiritual word of God. You know, one time the disciples were talking about food and, and hungry, and Jesus said, I have meat that you know not of. And they said, did he go buy some food somewhere? Did he, did he go and get some food? And he went, no, my meat is to do the will of the Father who has sent me. And so you see, this is a spiritual appetite that by eating of the Word of God, that Word will sustain you. You see, I, you need to eat some bread, but we shall not live by bread alone, as Jesus said, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So the Bible is filled up with truth. And the only way you're going to understand that truth is you need to have spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, a spiritual nose, a spiritual heart in order to comprehend that truth. Jesus told the disciples, I mean, uh, the Pharisees one time, he said, you don't understand me because my words are spirit and they are life. And you see, the word of God is spirit. When you read them in the natural, you're going to go, what is saying? What's going on here? What's he talking about there? What kind of ears is he talking about here? If we have ears, anyone who has ears. Well, he's talking about spiritual ears. Let's go to the next one. In Psalm 4610, it says, to be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. So what is this saying to us right here? I chose to put the scripture being led by the Spirit. Because first of all, he's saying, we need to be still. Some of us talk way too much. I'm capable of talking and rattling on too. We all, we, we talk way too much, especially when we come into prayer with the Lord. We think that we're being heard for our much speaking as it says in the scriptures. No, God is listening to our hearts that He wants us to be still and so He can speak to us and that we can listen and have, use our spiritual ears so we can listen to what the Spirit is saying to us. He's speaking, be quiet. You know, we need to be still. We need to know that He is God. That's an expression for the term, the word listen. It's an expression. And know that I am God. It means listen to what I'm saying. God is revealing Himself to us by His Spirit. And He's speaking to us His words. And He's telling us what we need to get out of our life so He can put something in. You know, your body is a vessel. The Bible says we're a vessel of honor when we come to the Lord. And this vessel is filled up. We're maxed out. And, and we need to pour out some of the stuff that's in there. Some of the stuff like people go to school and they got a lot of knowledge about their business. Well, you can't just get rid of the knowledge, but we need to kind of like, we got to get rid of that worldly understanding so that God can put spiritual understanding in us. You know, we trained ourselves by going to school and uh, by our parents and even the television and, and the movies and videos that we, that we watch and play are training us in a certain way in which to live your life. You'd be surprised how many people are functioning in their lives based upon things that they've learned in that fashion. And so the idea is that we need to learn from the Spirit. We need to learn. So we need to kind of push all of that knowledge out and that understanding 
and then start learning from the Holy Spirit how to hear the voice of God. How to understand when it's the voice of God or it's our own subconscious or it's even the devil speaking to us. How can we tell the difference? Well, the only way that you're even going to begin this journey is to be still and know that He is God. So that when He speaks, you will know it's God. So many people say, God told me this and God told me that. And I just say, okay, and then it never comes to pass. But gee, God told you to do this and now that you've done it and nothing's happened. You know, was it really God? Or did they misinterpret the, the thoughts in their mind? words your own you speak to yourself I talk to myself all the time people might think that's crazy but you do too everybody talks to themselves and it's just the way that we hear ourselves in our mind and, and we actually with our own mind we actually form like another person well that other person is really your subconscious it's really a spirit man on the inside and you can have a conversation with him but it's just yourself talking but the Holy Spirit lives in you. How do you know when it's His voice speaking? How do you know when it's like not someone else or a movie you watched the night before or something that's not speaking into you? See, be still and listen and know that He's God. And then He says in here, I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. That's an expression saying, if you're listening to God, then you will honor God in your own nation in your own city, in your own state. You will honor God throughout the world, Christians all over the world. If they're listening to God, they're being still, they will begin to honor God in all the world. Are you honoring God today on the job? Are you honoring God today in your family, among your children, grandkids, about you, and have the friends and people that, that know you? Are you honoring God in your nation, you see, in your world that you live in? This is something that we need to understand. You're here and you're alive right now, born again, because you are supposed to be honoring God in your life and around the people that know you. Are you being faithful and true? Are you training up your children the way that you should go? You see, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ just like I am, and we're going to pay account of everything we've done in this flesh. Are you ready for that? When, he stand, when you're standing there and He says, I said this to you, and you remember, you heard me say that. But you started to just do your own thing. I told you that you need to train up your children. Lord said, He's going to say those kind of things. I told you, you need to get them in church. You can't listen to what they want. They're children. You need to train them up in the way that they should go. But you listen to the Spirit telling you what to do. You're going to pay account to it. We've got to understand that. Next one, please. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. See, this is a whole scripture here about listening, trusting in the Lord, that He's speaking to us, and we're listening and we're obeying. We need to, we need to do what He's telling us to do. We need to train up those children. You need to be a witness on the job. You need to stop the things that are happening in your life. Some, some Christians, I even heard recently, a pastor says it's okay to curse. I'm going to tell you right now, you better stop the cursing because you're cursing your own life. The Bible says let no filthy communication come out of your mouth. Well, you better pay attention. We need to pay attention to what the Scriptures are saying. You can find out over in Ephesians 5. We can't let this filthy communicate. Our, our carnal nature will say and do all kinds of filthy things if we let it. We can get angry and curse somebody else and easily, even though we're born again. You don't think that you can do it? You get yourself in a position where there's a lot of pressure. I guarantee you, you'll do something and say something that you, you know you shouldn't do or say. You see, we need to understand that there's things we can do in the Spirit, but there's things that we, sh we just cannot do. We cannot allow ourselves to watch certain things and do and say certain things. You start cursing your own life. Like that, it's the power of the tongue. So we need to understand that truth. So right here, you know, it's telling us. The Lord will keep you in perfect peace. But the only way that's going to happen is if you keep your mind set on Him. You keep your thoughts fixed. You keep uh, the trust in the Lord. You need to put all of that first in priority. And let me tell you something. The only way you're going to be able to even begin to do this, this is difficult stuff, people. This takes a more advanced Christian. 
You can't stay a baby Christian all your life. It's time you grow up and you eat some meat. You know, the Bible says that, that milk is for the babies. So you can't throw through your whole life as a Christian drinking milk. That's the little infantile things of the Word. Letting your, your trash come out of your mouth and not disciplining your life. You know, these things are going to eventually cause you serious problems in your life. But as you mature in the Lord and you grow up, you start to understand, I need to train my mind to think on the Lord. In every situation, i got to ask myself, what would Christ do to this situation? What would He say? And then listen. Be still and be quiet because He'll speak to you. You'll hear Him. You'll know just what you should say and do. But it's going to take maturity in the Spirit. You see, babies don't understand. We've got young grandchildren and they're constantly like, well, Paul, why you do this? Why are you doing that? They're constantly asking questions as they're starting to get. The one I'm thinking about is going, that's going to be five years old this year, Samuel. And he's asking a lot of questions. The little one, Jackson, he's going, he just turned three. He's not asking all those questions yet because he's still a baby. But the little five-year-old, and then we got a, we got one that's going to be 10, and then 11, and 13, they're asking questions. They want to know why we do what we do. They're observing now. They're paying attention in such a way. Are we listening to their voice? Are we listening to them when they say, why are you doing this? Are we just blowing them off? Or are we really giving them an answer? You see, we've got to mature in the Lord. We've got to become mature Christians so we can be ready to answer people with the hope that we have in us of why we do what we do. Are we disembarrassed that we go to church? Are we ashamed of being a Christian? I challenge you today that we should not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's because of that gospel that has brought salvation to our souls. The world out there is drifting away. The universities and colleges are teaching people all oh, kind of trash. You just listen to them. They're off the charts with some of the things that they're believing with and believing in. But the Word of God is still powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, it says in Hebrews 4.12. So let's look at the next scripture. Here in Proverbs 1, 1 through 6, uh, it says, These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Notice that I put this, this, this passage of scriptures in because it's going to use the word listen in just a minute. But right here it's talking about the purpose for these, these scriptures that Solomon wrote down that was inspired by the Holy Spirit that they're in our Bible. But he's saying right here it's so that people can learn wisdom and discipline. Now you see this right here is a mature scripture. This is about maturity. This is about saying things that are right and correct. These are things about be still my soul and know that He's God. This is matured scriptures that will teach discipline and wisdom to help us understand what's going on in this world. You know, we need to be able to listen to what the world's saying out there. It doesn't mean they're right, but I want to know why they do what's wrong. So I'm listening to what they're saying, so when I pray, I know how to pray for this world. You know, God loves all people, but He doesn't love the sin that the people are into. It's okay to, to protest and to do something to get something right, to get things back in line and in check. But it's not right to start burning buildings and destroying private property. That is not the right way. And this is what we see going on in this world. But there's a good protest that is going on. And this protest, yeah, stop the violence and keep the terrible things from happening. But not all police officers are bad. You cannot throw out all police officers because they got some bad ones. That's terrible. It's like you can't throw out a whole race of people just because you got bad people in that race. That's insane. And you can't throw out all churches because they got some bad churches out there. And they got some Christians that are not living correctly. You cannot throw out all Christian faith. There's a true faith that's, that's interwoven in the midst of the whole mess. And you can't throw it all out just because of some bad ones. It would be an immature act to do so. And God's calling us to maturity, to discipline and wisdom, to understand the insights of the wise. Next one, please. Their purpose is to teach, that's talking about the Proverbs, their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives to help them to do 
what is right and just and fair. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. These, the Proverbs of the Word of God, I remember when I first, I wasn't even really saved yet, but I was reading the Bible. And I reached the book of Proverbs and I was reading it and I thought, wow, I need to be wise. And then later on when I read the book of Matthew, I gave my life to the Lord, so it wasn't long after that. But I even thought as I read this, what, was, what the Proverbs was about. It was to make people wise, make them be disciplined, to be successful in life. You know, God wants you to be able to work for a living and make money and, and uh, be able to enjoy a vacation, to be able to buy something nice and have a nice car to live in. He would want you to do that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you do, all you have is a bicycle to, to ride around in. He wants you to have a bicycle. That's fine. It's, you know, I'm not talking about uh, things representing your wisdom and your, and, and your prosperity. But I'm talking about to be successful in whatever level that you live in. And wherever you are, God wants you to be successful. And one of the ways of success is to have peace with what you have and to be content with the things God has given you. These are all matured ways of life. You know, so, this, so the scriptures are being written, not just Proverbs, but all scriptures, so that we might have discernment, knowledge, especially to the young people. I'm, I'm going to be 63 this year. I, I, I have a job to do. The Lord wants to take me home. I'll be ready and I'll go and I'll, I'll be happy to be there in heaven. But I'm not ready to go yet. Because there are young people in my life. I got my grandchildren. I still got my children that are younger than me. And I got other people that's in this church. I got children that attend the church that I pastor. And I have to be an example to them. A hope for later on in life. I got to be happy and joyous. I got to have the peace of God in me. Do you have the peace of God? Do you have happiness, joy, and peace in the Lord? Do you have these attributes that the children can see? Man, we have a job to do, whole older people. I didn't call you old, I just called you older. And we, need, we have a job to do, to be a mature Christian in the Lord and teach the younger ones that they might have knowledge and discernment. They might understand what is right and wrong out there in this world. That they will know in their heart how to shun the evil draw in the good. Amen. So right here, God wants you to be successful. Doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. Doesn't matter what you own. Be successful. Enjoy the things God has given you. Next, please. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. See the word listen? That word right there is in the Hebrew. And it means absorb. It means bring into your being. It means believe in it. People are believing stuff that are being taught them in these colleges and universities and out there on the streets. And people are becoming streetwise. They're becoming smart when it comes to school. But are they listening to the things to make them wiser than what they are? Become a wise person when you understand that one day you're going to die and you, and you are doing something about it and preparing yourself. Some say, why should I prepare myself? I don't believe there's anything after it. Well, you need to be wise and you need to look around and see. You need to understand that there is something after death. There's too much proof out there to just throw it all under the bus, so to speak. You know, and it says, and let those that have understand receive guidance by ex exploring the meaning in these proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. You know, the scripture tells us that God has, has hid things in this world. And the wise person or king will search a matter out. So we need to understand that God has everything around for us to see and to use and understand. But we have to go after it. You know, when you, grow, when you were growing up, you heard about older people going to college or something. And you didn't know what that was. Then as you started growing up, then you started to know what college was about. Then you started making decisions, whether you were going to go to college or trade school, or just go right on out and get a job and work your way up that way. But you were making decisions based on these kind of things. Well, you see, that is a gift of God. That's a gift of God that caused you to make decisions to go and do whatever you, you uh, decided to do in life. Well, it's the same thing in the Lord. People in the church 
they scare me sometimes because they say, I don't understand what Pastor Jim's talking about, but they never call me up and they never have a meeting or something to sit down and ask me, what am I talking about? And so therefore they go through life not understanding. Well, they want to understand they will. They want to learn to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer or a mechanic. Then they go into school and they learn it. So if they really want to learn how to be Christians, they can call me up and we can talk and I can explain what I meant here and what I was talking about there. But they don't do that. And then they go through life not knowing and not understanding. And that's an atrocity. That's, that's a, a terrible thing. You know, to go through life and then you're going to get to heaven one day and find out you could have had so much more. You could have had, you could have had much more peace in life and much more joy. And you're going to cry. We're all going to cry. But, and God will wipe away your tears. But you could, have, you could have lived a life in more comfort than what you lived. Absolutely. The promises are still yes and amen. And so right here, these parables and these riddles were given to us. Jesus spoke them. And they were given to us so that if we wanted to understand, He would bring that understanding. And you can know more and benefit your life. Next one, please. Proverbs 5, 11 through 14. At the end of your life, you will lament when your physical body has been consumed, and you will say, how I hated discipline, and how my heart despised correction. I didn't obey my teachers or listen closely to my mentors. I am on the verge of complete ruin before the en entire community. This is, man, this is something right here that you need to go and read. I just finished talking about that a little bit, but here it is. Solomon wrote it down. At the end of your life, you know, I used to be a nurse and home minister for five years. And I remember the, listening to the regrets of some of the old people in the nursing home. Or seeing them in the last years of their life, laying in their bed and can't move. And there were so many great promises in the Word of God. I'm not saying that I won't wind up there even though I know the promises. All I'm saying is that as, as a nursing home minister, many of them didn't even know if they were going to heaven. We would go in and pray for them and we'd say, do you know if you're going to heaven when you die? And they say, we don't know. Nobody can know that. And I say, but the scriptures tell you, you can. You can know that you have eternal life. And I would ask them, do you want to know? And they would say, yeah. They hear they are on their end of their life in their 80s and 90s. And now they're asking me, lead them to Jesus. Because they, they grew up in religion all their life, many of them. And now, here they are on their deathbed. And I'm praying them through to Jesus Christ. Wow. They might be like this person here, a, a description. They're laying on the deathbed, they're old, their bodies were decrepit. Many of them went into eternity. I remember leading the lady to the Lord, and, and the next week when we went back in on a Wednesday, that person had passed away. I thought, wow, how close, how close. The entire life that she lived without the Lord. In the end, she had the Lord and went to heaven. That's awesome. But she could have had a much better life much better life. You know, you need to ask yourself that question. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I preached on a message called Imagination, Gift to God. God gave you an imagination. What are you imagining? Some people, that's all they imagine is sickness and disease and, and they curse all the time and they're mad and they're angry about the government and they, oh, and on and on they go. They're using their imagination to build up these hatreds. Why don't you use your imagination for something good? Imagine yourself being at peace and rest. Hmm. This is what the Proverbs are all for. The end of this person's life described here is not pleasant. But I can imagine having a pleasant life where at the end of my life, no matter if I'm physically not able to move or walk, I'll still have the joy and the peace of the Lord. Knowing that my life isn't destined to be here, it's heaven and have that peace. Next one, please. James 1.19 says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. There's an end result about these three different things that's being said here. Being quick to listen. What would you do, Lord, right now? As a young minister, I lost my temper. I did things that were fleshly and carnal. And 
now I look back on it and I keep saying, Lord, forgive me, forgive me. And he said, I already have forgiven you. But it still bothers me. But now I'm older in the Lord and I, I'm, I listen more than I talk. I'm listening to what people are saying. I'm listening to what the voice of the Spirit is saying. And I'll ask the Lord in, in the situations I find myself and I say, Lord, what would you have me do? What, how should I speak? What should I say? What, what scriptures should I use and speak these scriptures into my life and the promises? And He speaks to me and, and I can hear it. You can too. People say, you can't hear the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God. He wants you to hear Him. He's speaking to you. Listen. So we need to be quick to listen on every situation. Then we need to be slow to speak. Be careful what you're about to say. The words you're about to say to someone or some situation could be the very words that could cause your demise and your downfall. Life and death and power of the tongue, don't forget that. I will always and will always repeat that. It's so important that you understand that. James talks about the tongue and so forth and how we, we need to learn that by guiding a horse is like that tongue. Your tongue will guide your life to a good or a bad situation. We need to be slow to speak. Think about what you're about to say. Even in prayer to the Lord, think about what you're about to say when you pray. Be careful and understand that when you judge and you judge somebody else, that judgment's coming to you first. Understand that. And the third thing is, and slow, they get angry. Man, you can get angry just because of the way a person's dressed. You know, it's easy to do nowadays, but you don't know the heart of that person. You don't know the heart of that person. They could be covered in tattoos and have their pants half down and hair in all different colors. And you might judge that outward appearance. That person is telling you by the design that they're trying to find truth. They're trying to find purpose. They find, they're trying to find acceptance. They listen with your spiritual ears to what they're saying. You need to look with your spiritual eyes and understand why they're, why they're doing what they're doing. And you see what I'm saying? This is all important that we, that we are quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Because we, like this is what Paul, what Paul said to the Corinthians, of such with some of us. So why get mad of all of those? that are doing things we, we don't like and we see them doing bad things. Of such with some of us. And the difference is, is that we got washed and cleansed and we're born again. And we still do dumb things. So be careful how you judge. Be careful what you say about another man's servant, whether he stands or falls, it says in Romans 14. Understand that God is dealing with every person on this planet. And they're all trying to find their niche in life. Pray for them. In the, in the last one, James 1.22. But don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. Listen. We need to listen. But then what good is listening if we don't take that next step and do what it says? If I would have went on to the next scripture, it says, don't be like the person that looked at themselves in the mirror and then they walked away and they forgot what they looked like. And they go out and judge everybody else for having their hair messed up. But when they were looking in that, in that mirror, their hair was spiritually messed up. And now they're judging everybody else's hair out there. They forgot that their hair was messed up. They should have used that opportunity to comb it. Spiritually speaking, the Word of God is that mirror. And when we look in it, we all fall short. We all fall short of that Word. See, so we need to be a doer of the Word. We need to, when we see a scripture that kind of tells us we're doing something wrong, pray about it. Father, help me to understand. Help me to know. Help me to live correctly. Help me to love everybody. Help me to, to not judge and be condemning. There's a time when we need to judge, but we need to judge righteous judgment. You judge the sin, not the sinner. That sinner one day could get saved. And they might do more for Christ than you're doing. Or I'm doing. So if we're going to do anything, let's compare ourselves to Jesus Christ. Let's compare ourselves to His nature. 
and let us judge ourselves based on that. So as I close this morning, tomorrow I'm going to be preaching part two. We're going to go further with this at church. But this right here, we're going to end with just this thought in mind. What will you do with the life that God has given you? Do you know what to do with it? Holy Spirit knows. Are you listening? The very journey you're on might be the wrong journey. Maybe you need to stop, turn around, and head on to that road there. The Lord has a plan for you and a purpose. Do you know what it is? Are you listening? Are you hearing His voice? You say, well, I know I'm supposed to be going to this church. Do you know for sure? Has the Spirit told you where to go to church? Some people say, I'm tired of church. I'm not going to go no more. Is that what the Spirit's saying? Is He telling you to do church in your house? Is He telling you to spend time worshiping God the Father? In Jesus' name, listen. You need to listen. Father, we love you and we thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for giving us ears to hear. Teach us to use these ears. Teach us to use them to hear your voice. We give you the praise in Jesus' name.